Hi, it's Pastor Amy, and I'm here to read you another book. Today's book is The Man Caught by a Fish. The Man Caught by a Fish. It's from the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah. Okay, here we go. The Man Caught by a Fish. When God looked down on Nineveh, that city made him sad, because the things its people did were almost always bad. The way they live must change, God thought. A prophet must be sent. So God told, told Jonah he should go and tell them to repent. Repent means to ask for forgiveness, to say we've made a mistake and we want to be forgiven. Okay, so there's Jonah. There's God pointing him to Nineveh. Okay. But Jonah didn't want to go. I just can't waste my time on strangers who don't love my Lord and are not friends of mine. I just won't go to Nineveh. So Jonah left that day and bought a ticket on a ship that went the other way. What do you think God thought? Hmm, we'll find out. Jonah went aboard and looked around the inside of the ship. Since God won't find me here, he thought, I'll rest up on my trip. But as he slept, God sent a storm with winds that were so strong that soon the sailors were afraid their ship would not last long. There's Jonah taking his nap. And look at this, there's a big storm. The ship is getting filled with water. And as the waves beca became so high that they could, not, that they could sink the boat, they threw their cargo overboard to keep their ship afloat, but nothing helped. Then someone said, the storm was sent because of something one of us has done to find him. Let's draw straws. They're trying to figure out, they think that somebody on the ship made God mad. And Jonah drew the shortest straw. They asked, are you the one? Has your God sent this storm on us because of what you've done? See that? And on the slippery deck, he faced the men. His face was grim. I tried to run away from God, but one cannot run from him. I know these winds and mighty waves were sent here by my Lord. So if you want to stop this storm, just throw me overboard. We can't do that, they cried aloud. They tried to row instead. It didn't help, so in the end, they did what Jonah said. So if you can see right there, they threw him off the ship. Right there. As soon as he was overboard, the sea was calm again. And all the men knelt down and prayed to God our Lord right then. As Jonah sank beneath the waves, he couldn't hold his breath, but God had sent a mighty fish to rescue him from death. See how calm the storm, no more storm anymore, it's calm seas. And then where's Jonah going? Into the mouth of the fish, right? The fish swam up, mouth opened wide, and swallowed Jonah down. So in the belly of the fish, God didn't let him drown. Three days and nights he cried to God because he was afraid. You should have gone to Nineveh, God told him as he prayed. To you the Ninevites are strange, but they're my people too. You should have brought my word to them as you were told to do. So there's Jonah inside the fish. Right. And then God sent the fish toward land and with a mighty cough, the fish dumped Jonah on the sand and turned and then swam off. That must have been a big fish. And Jonah knew what he must do. He had a second chance. He started off towards Nineveh without a backward glance. And when he got to Nineveh, he preached all through the town. In 40 days, you all will die. My God is coming down. Any pictures there? And there's Jonah telling the Ninevites that they need to behave. Okay. You wonder why. Just look around. You see the things you do. And most of what you say and think is mean and wicked too. So 
So there's Jonah, and the people are actually listening to him. You see that? They hung their heads in shame. They, some cried. They didn't even eat. They put on rags, took off their shoes, and walked in their bare feet. And as God looked down, he saw their hearts had changed. They understood. And so he thought, I won't destroy them as I said I would. Okay, so they felt sorry for their bad behavior. Then Jonah went outside the walls to watch the Lord come down. Those 40 days have long since passed. God should destroy this town. Now God had caused a plant to grow to give him extra shade, but Jonah only sat and sulked inside the booth he'd made. So the booth is kind of like a tent. So there's the little tree that was growing, and there's Jonah, and there's the city, and Jonah thinks the city should, should have been destroyed by God, right? I'll just stay here, he told himself, where I can watch the town. And as he sat, he was surprised. The leaves were falling down. What is the matter here, he said. Now I have lost my shade. And in the stem he saw a hole he thought a worm had made. He bent and looked. I think a worm has killed it, Jonah said. And he was angry with the worm because the plant was dead. Okay, so it was very hot and he needed shade and now the plant was dying or was dead. But then God came and spoke to him. What kind of man are you? You feel so sorry for a plant. Why not the city too? Just think about how happy they must be. Why do you have that frown? The angels cheer when one is saved. Through you, I saved a town. So God said, don't, here's God's hand right here with the town, Nineveh, and there's Jonah. He's saying, Jonah, don't be sorry just for the tree that, the plant that died, but be happy that I saved all of the people and that they, I gave them forgiveness. Okay. Well, that's today's story. The man caught by a fish, it's about Jonah and how he didn't want to tell, he didn't want to do what God told him to do. And then he did, and then he didn't like the way God handled what he did and forgave the people, and then he understood. Okay, so that's the story of Jonah. You can read that in your Bible, Jonah and the big, great, big fish. Thanks, I'll see you later.